Welcome to episode number 105 of the PR Maven podcast. My guest today was Lindsay Skilling, CEO of the iconic Giffords ice cream brand. Lindsay Skilling, who's CEO of Giffords ice cream, is a Skowhegan, Maine native who grew up with a love of ice cream ingrained in her genetic makeup. She worked at the fifth-generation family business during summers throughout high school and college. After graduating from Bryant University in 2006 with her degree in business management and a minor in psychology, Lindsay started working full-time for Giffords as assistant to the controller. To build her skills and learn more about the ice cream business overall, she worked in a variety of positions, including VP of Sales and Marketing, before assuming her current position as CEO. Beyond Giffords, Lindsay is dedicated to mentoring other business leaders and giving back to her community by serving on numerous boards. She has served on the Institute for Family-Owned Business Board for the last nine years and currently holds the role of vice chair. Through IFOB, she has gotten involved with Women in Family Business Forum, CEO Central, and the Next Generation Affinity Group. Lindsay currently serves on the Educate Maine Board of Directors also. Staying true to her Skowhegan roots, she recently became a corporator for Skowhegan Savings Bank and sits on the Skowhegan Chamber of Commerce Board. Wow, I am impressed with all that Lindsay Skilling is able to accomplish in her busy life. While she maintains a busy schedule between running her family-owned business with her two siblings and the numerous boards she serves on, at the end of the day, Lindsay is truly about her family. Lindsay and her husband, Jay, live in Gray, Maine with their two young kids, Ava and Jacoby. She enjoys spending her free time with them doing what Mainers do best, spending time outdoors in the mountains and at the lake. The foursome love to cross-country ski, snowmobile, snowshoe, bike, hike, run, and swim. Lindsay also enjoys watching her daughter play basketball. Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR Maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Lindsay, tell us about your role at Giffords and how you got into it in the first place. I am currently the CEO of uh, my family business, Giffords Ice Cream, and I have been for the past five years. So I, as a young child, I would always be involved in the family business from being at mini golf courses or going on road trips with my father who ran the sales and marketing end of the business. But really what jump-started my career with Giffords was right out of college. I, the day I got home from graduating, I I had been presented with a job offer from my uncle and our controller. And I was hired as the assistant to the controller at that time. And from there, I worked alongside the controller, um, learning the finance end of the business. And then I also worked alongside my uncle who he oversaw production and finance for our family business and it evolved. I had to, at one point, jump in or be thrown into um, running our sales and marketing department, which 
I'll just say I'm not good at sales. <laughs> I, I, I certainly admit that openly. So it just evolved as the years went. I ran uh, sales and marketing for a few years and then it evolved. There was other needs within the company. I became pregnant uh, with my first child. So I took on a role of general manager in 2010. And then it shifted around 2015. And we're not big on titles at Giffords, but they changed my title uh, to CEO. My responsibilities didn't really change from what I was doing. But so I became CEO around 2015. Well, I commend all of you because I know how complex your business must be. And I think that there's a lot of dynamics within a family that uh, must be challenging. So I think that uh, your family has managed the process beautifully and you've had so many things to contend with. M m specifically, we were talking about COVID and, and that's a whole other topic of conversation. But it's funny because I'm sure people think, oh, ice cream, that must be just so fun. But even though ice cream is fun, it's still a business and there's still balance sheets and P&Ls and all those things that you have to deal with, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when somebody says, oh, yes, that must be so fun, I'm sure you just smile. But in your head, you're going, yeah, not always as fun as it seems. <laughs> yeah, as you're saying this, I'm like, oh. It can be fun. <laughs> yeah, there are moments that are fun. My job is the same because I get to travel a lot and I do smile. So it makes it seem like it's fun, but <laughs> it isn't always fun. There's certain aspects of running a business that are a grind no matter what business it is. <laughs> that is very well said. <laughs> yeah. So as the CEO, can you share what you think makes Gifford's ice cream special among the many brands of ice cream? Yeah, I think one of the things is uh, the passion behind it. And, and what I mean by that is it's a family business. And until someone has either worked for their family business or worked for someone else's family business, I think that might be hard to understand. But you have to understand that our name is on our package. It's on our road sign at our stands. And so everything we do, every decision we make, there is love behind it. There is passion behind it. We think of our overall family, not just those of the last name, but those that work for our family business and with us alongside us. So I think that every package that leaves our freezer, we have pride behind that and we need it to be the best that it can be. We need to succeed. So I think that that does make us special and unique among some other brands that are out there. But also to the ice cream, I think it's the process in which we make the ice cream. You might remember a, a few years ago, there was maybe we'll call it a fad with some other brands and you would see on their packaging made slow churned. And we looked at each other and we said, is there another way to make it? Because <laughs> we, <laughs> use we use 1940s Cherry Burrell freezers. They are not that efficient. They are not fast. <laughs> Could we replace these freezers with something more modern? Absolutely. However, right now, we feel that, that these freezers work the best for our family brands and it creates a smoother texture to the ice cream with less ice crystals. So it's creamier, it's less grainy. We also make 90% of our own ripples and bases from scratch right in house. And we've been told that we're one of few, if not on the only um, company in New England that does this anymore. Our, our strawberry ice cream, for example, it is not a fast process to make strawberry ice cream for our company. It's a two-day process. We sugar the berries, we strain the berries, and then they can go into the ice cream. These are just a, a few examples as far as what I think our, our brand is unique to our customers. I can hear the passion in the way you describe the brand. And I think that a brand, it resides not only in the hearts, but also in the minds of your customers. And I think a brand becomes stronger 
when you have a tribe of raving fans. And I, I know you do have a tribe of raving fans. My own mother is in assisted living. Um, she's 87. And I have to drop off moose tracks every oh. week <laughs> at her assisted living home. And of course, now that we're in the quarantine, they have to quarantine it in the freezer in the entryway of the of her assisted living home. So luckily they do have a freezer there and then somebody brings it up and she's always so happy when she gets her moose tracks. Oh, well, <laughs> thank her very much. We're, we have to do the same thing with my grandmother, Audrey Gifford. She's in an assisted living location and she has to have a bowl of chocolate ice cream every single night. And yeah. so they'll call and say, okay, she, your grandmother needs some more chocolate. So we have to set it on the front porch and there's a process so that she can get our chocolate ice cream, but we wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. So there is something fashion about the whole, about ice cream anyway, and the fact that you use an old fashioned process and um, you referred to your freezers from 1940s. I think that uh, people want ice cream to be made the old fashioned way. They wouldn't really want new fashion ice yeah. cream. Yeah, <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something about your brand as well. You're still making it the way that they made it almost 100 years ago. So I think that's uh, that's really important. Lindsay, did you always know you wanted to be in a leadership position at Giffords? And if so, what did you set out to learn and achieve before you could feel comfortable in that role of CEO? Yeah, I, d I don't know if I knew I always wanted to be in a leadership role, but from a very young age, I was very interested in helping my dad prepare for sales meetings and any job or task that he would give me. And this is in grade school. I was I was young, or on the Fourth of July or Memorial Day, if he had to do a special delivery because someone ran out of ice cream, I would always want to go with him. So from a very young age, I knew that I wanted to, we'll say, work for the family business, and if they would have me, <laughs> I knew when I, I think things started to maybe change, or we'll say, click in my mind, if you will more so as I got older um, in eighth grade, freshman year of high school, I would say I became more, more actively involved. I would work summers and in the office and, and doing whatever was needed. And so I got to really know the business more as I was older. And again, leadership role, we're not, it's a family business. We're not huge on titles. You do what you need to do to make sure that the best quality ice cream is, is going out the door for our loyal customers. I was fortunate after graduating college and I went for business and psychology, knowing that I was going to come back family business. And I was fortunate that there was a role for me at that time of graduation that just got my foot in the door from there. I had to work my butt off. <laughs> it wasn't just handed to me like some might think of a family business. You probably had to work harder, I would imagine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, that is so true because all eyes are on you. You have the last name. So everyone's watching your every single move, seeing what time you're in at work, what time you leave work. Now, everything and my personality along with it. I'm the type that I put a lot of pressure on myself already. <laughs> it took time uh, to understand the business from multiple perspectives. I was involved in, I ran the sales and marketing, customer service, accounting, how our ice cream is made. We also have five ice cream stands. So working alongside my aunt um, at the stands to learn how to make a frap and a banana split, which is n another area that I'm not great at. So if you want to frap and you want to see a frap all over someone, just have me make it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good video, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, it would. And I'm sure my coworkers would love to see that. <laughs> but while I understand all these aspects, I am certainly not an expert. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. I came to recognize that it, it wasn't my role to be the expert. It's my role to have a grasp of all areas of the business, but really to lean on the rest of my family. And when I say family, those with the last name and those 
those who have worked for the company for years, they're really the experts in their roles. And I lean on them, they lean on me. And it's really a collaborative kind of leadership style that I have making business decisions with my siblings and the greater Giffords family, if you will. Last week on the podcast, I interviewed Carl Strand, who is general manager of Sugarloaf. And he said some similar things, although Sugarloaf might not be a family business, but he talked about really listening to people, not only the customers, but also the people who are working there, all the employees who are so passionate and the fact that he does take the time to really listen to them and value their opinions. It sounds like that's what you do as well. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure many people say our business is open door policy. Well, at Giffords, <laughs> that open door policy is we take it to another level. We are our family in all aspects. They feel very comfortable with offering ideas and suggestions. And that's what I love because, you know, an idea today might, might not make sense, but who knows a year from now? It's just, it's really a fun work environment. Well, I'm sure you help make it that way too. And it sounds like you really honor and respect the people who are part of your team. And I'm sure they value that as well. Yeah. Hey, without them, we wouldn't be here today. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, they deserve a lot of credit. So Lindsay, it's clear that family is very important to you. And how do you incorporate this value into what the Giffords brand is? Yeah. Family to me is everything. The value of family, it, it was instilled in in us, me and my siblings, by my mother, Kathy, and father, John, from a very young age. They oftentimes had to work different schedules so that one could be home with us three kids as we were growing up. My mom, she ran our first ice cream stand in Skowhegan and our mini golf course in Skowhegan. Oftentimes, the three of us were at work with her because we had no one else that could watch us. But we weren't just playing mini golf, I'll tell you that. <laughs> she, she certainly put us to work when we were there. We had to, we had to earn that happy meal <laughs> for, for dinner or, or whatnot. My dad, he'd, he'd go to work oftentimes at 2, 3 a.m., whatever hour he needed to, just so that he could get what he needed done for that particular day so that he could come to our sporting events and school activities. He always made sure that he could work around missing any of our events. But I do remember there was a time that we had a, an opportunity come up in sales and my father had an opportunity to attend a meeting and that made him miss one of my track meets and he felt so bad. He, he even pulled me aside and talked about it with me. Nancy, this was, it was, I was in high school. It was a track meet. It wasn't <laughs> anything major, but I mean, he sent flowers the day of the track meet to wish me luck. He put, he put a handwritten note to you know, my dad, like he likes to have fun. So it was a funny little note that he put in my in my bag so that I would see it when I was getting ready for the track meet. I tell you this just to, to show you that really my parents have instilled this family value since we were little and it has not stopped from there. And it's just, it's that type of focus on family that I feel has made our company what it is today. We, today we try to be as, and, and, forever. <laughs> we try to be as flexible as we can so that everyone that works at Giffords can attend those family events and sporting events or extracurricular activities or, or whatever it may be that they're passionate about because we only live once and family to, is everything. I keep saying that, but it truly is. And kids or grandkids, whatever it may be, nieces, nephews, they grow up really fast. And while I am the CEO of Giffords, I'm also a mom. I have, a, I have two young kids and, and a husband, and they are, they are my priority also. When they're older and involved in whatever they may be involved in, I will plan to do as my parents did and work around their activities so that I don't miss them growing up either. I'm so glad to hear you say that because I have two sons in their 20s, actually, 
and they used to play baseball at Hippic Field in Farmington. Oh, yes. <laughs> when, when the highlight was always, could they run across the street, <laughs> supervise, of course, and right. uh, line up at Giffords to get an ice cream. So when you say that life is short and they grow up fast, it is so true because just as I'm saying this out loud, I so miss those days of watching the baseball games and yeah. seeing my kids make a hit or get yeah. somebody out of first or whatever it was. My son, Craig, was very good at stealing and I could just, anyway, it just <laughs> brings back all these flood of memories and Giffords is part of it. And it sounds like your father really, that brings a tear to my eye when, you, when he sent you flowers and wrote you a funny note. It's so awesome. Yeah, he, that was, even today, if running a business is, is not all, hard. yeah, it is hard. It, it is difficult. And sometimes he'll get a funny card and write in it and leave it on my desk or get some chips and dip because he knows, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that I love it. Or just because he's been there, he gets it. It is stressful. It is hard work. And it takes away from my kids sometimes because I'm getting calls in the middle of the night or what, whatever it may be, but that's what it is. And it's a family business and we all support one another. Oh yeah, I know. I can think of all those times when I was standing on the side of the baseball diamond watching my kids, but I had my phone. Oh <laughs> yeah. I was probably responding to emails and calls. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, you have to stay right on top of things if you're running a business, I know. Yeah. So tell me about, Giffords as a company, how many employees and how much ice cream do you sell? How many flavors do you have? Yeah, it's ever changing because right now we're running production seven days a week to keep up with demand. So we've had to hire more folks, but um, we're around 44 full time uh, family members. And in the, but this time of year, that number grows closer to 120 with our five ice cream stands that we own and operate that are open, as well as our summer seasonal production folks that we bring on. We have over 100 ice cream flavors because we do some private label business as well. And we have frozen yogurt, sherbet, sorbets. Our ice cream is sold in grocery stores, in quarts and half gallons, but we're also sold at our five stands in scoop shops, as well as other independent ice cream shops, colleges, universities, restaurants, from Maine down to North and South Carolina, through the Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, as far west as uh, Nevada, and we produce last year we sold about 2.3 million gallons of ice cream and we anticipate this year to be right around that same number might be a tick up or two so yeah has covid increased the demand for ice cream it it has shifted it i will say retail our retail business grocery stores that in when covid first will say hit in April, it shifted from our food service business to our retail business growth. So our retail really has been double digit growth so far this year. And I'll say that's due to COVID. And then our food service end of things has, it's had a slower start because businesses, scoop shops, colleges are not in session right now. So that has uh, dipped down a bit, but now that the scoop shops are open, it's starting to increase again. So I guess ice cream just makes people happy right now. I know it makes me happy. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that people who are quarantining at home just to be able to go get an ice cream cone probably feels like such a normal and happy experience. I can right. see that families would want to go out and and just get out of the house to get some ice cream. Yeah, they were our, our loyal customers. They certainly were very excited to see our five sta family owned stands open in Maine when we opened and uh, scattered throughout May. Usually we open in mid March, but we made the decision to let's just hold off for a bit. And so we opened in May and it, things are, we have different 
different processes in place for safety reasons, but uh, they can still get their ice cream cone and their banana splits and fraps. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, Lindsay, what differentiates the Giffords brand from its competitors? I had started to allude to this earlier, but if we say we're going to make pistachio ice cream, we're going to make real pistachio ice cream with real pistachios. Even when pistachios went sky high and they're still pretty fairly expensive. That's one of our most expensive flavors, but we still use real pistachios while others substitute the pistachios for almonds. If we say we're going to make M&M ice cream, we use real M&Ms, we get the permission and whatnot. We use real wild Maine blueberries, maple syrup from Maine, from right up in Madison, Maine. So I think a lot of it is the ingredients that we are able to use. I also think another thing that differentiates our overall brand is our commitment to Maine and New England ice cream. We're made in New England for New England, which I feel is shown in everything from our sports team partnerships with the Bruins and the Patriots to our our family roots right in Skowhegan, Maine. Yeah. And as I said earlier, I think it's the process and the quality of of how we make our ice cream. I'm sure that you have a lot of brand ambassadors also. So those are the people who might have grown up with your brand and maybe they moved to places like yeah. Nevada. But <laughs> yes. they're so thrilled when they can get Giffords <laughs> even far from New England. Yes. And, and those loyal customers and fans of ours they do move away and they'll reach out to us and ask us, can we get it in this location? Or, oh my goodness, I just saw Giffords at this store and they're so excited. And it just, whenever we get those kind letters or notes from our our customers, we're sure to share them with our entire family because it just puts a smile on your face to think, wow, this small family business from Maine is putting these smiles on our customers' faces. I think we're doing something right. (laughs) I definitely think that the Giffords brand and the Maine brand are very similar. Also, I think people outside of Maine tend to think of Maine as an honest, old-fashioned, family-oriented place. And so I think that probably... Maine benefits from Giffords and Giffords benefits from Maine and it all adds up to good feelings. We're going to continue our conversation with Lindsay shortly, but first I want to tell you about my new book, which is called Grow Your Audience, Grow Your Brand, available now on amazon.com as a paperback or Kindle edition. And soon you'll be able to purchase the Audible edition as well, which I recorded uh, at the Portland Pod in South Portland, Maine, where I am today. And the book includes actionable advice on growing a network and growing a brand by taking care of your audience, which is just what Giffords does. So I'm so glad we have uh, Lindsay on on the line today. And actually, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with more from Lindsay Skilling, CEO of Giffords Ice Cream. Do you want to grow your client or customer base? Perhaps increase brand awareness? maybe tell your unique story more effectively? Of course you do, but you may be worried that you don't have enough expertise to make that happen. No worries, PR Maven Nation. Let the PR Maven herself, Nancy Marshall, show you how easy it is to get your message across effectively using a powerful yet simple tool, a message map. Nancy's training is often called informative and constructive, well-designed and impactful, with a perfect blend of theory and real life experience. You will leverage Nancy's expertise to create your own message map when you register for this comprehensive online video training course, which is broken down into four easy to understand modules. Normally this course is priced at $147, but for listeners of the PR Maven podcast, that's you PR Maven Nation, It's only $29 when you enter the code word podcast during enrollment. It even includes a workbook and bonus content to guide you through the process. So go to prmaven.com and click on the message map mastery course to enroll today. Remember, enter the word podcast during enrollment for a special discounted price of $29. 
Welcome back. Today, we're talking with Lindsay Skilling, CEO of Giffords Ice Cream, and I want to dive right back in with more questions. Lindsay, tell us about the various family members in the company and how do you get along? I just can't imagine my own family getting along. <laughs> how do you keep your personal life separate from your professional life or does it seep in? Yeah, so <laughs> everyone always thinks, they always ask, do you all get along? I, I And we do. We have fun together. We get along great. And I'm not just saying that. We It's ice cream. And again, you know, we're very passionate in what we do, but we like to have fun. We like to play little jokes on one another. So it keeps us all on our toes. But it is our family name on the package that goes out the door each day. So we do take it very seriously also. So for those uh, folks that are our family members that are involved in the business. We have my brother, JC, who is the VP of sales for the business. We have my sis my younger sister, Samantha, who is our marketing manager. We have my cousin, Ryan, who is our QA manager. We have my uncle and father, my uncle Roger, my father, John, and they're out of the day-to-day -day operations of the business entirely. And we, we tag them in if we have projects or we want to bounce ideas off them or get advice from them because they do have the history that we're lacking in my generation. And we also have my uncle Arland who just recently retired at the end of 2019, but he is working a few days a week back to his roots in store, checking on our, our ice cream at the store levels. So yeah, there's a handful of us. <laughs> yeah, but how I uh, keep my personal life separate from my professional life, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I don't know. How, it's hard to explain unless you've worked for your family business because it is, to me, it is one in the same. You work closely with your family members every single day. But I do feel that we do a good job of realizing what our business needs are and the importance of setting aside our personal matters when we need to focus and get things done. I, I, I try to, like I say, I try to turn it off, but it's pa your passion and pride of your family business. There's no such thing. Mountain biking at, up at Sugarloaf with my kids and my husband, and I've got my, my cell phone right in this little fanny pack backpack just so that if somebody calls on the weekends or something that I can, I know what's going on. You don't just turn it off. It's your family. It's intertwined. So I can just imagine and you care deeply about what you do. And I can, I can just imagine that. And I feel like at your level, it's very hard to have a separate personal life from your professional life. I can see how it's just your life. <laughs> so, and yeah, I, and I admire that. I'm still learning. I learn something every single day from colleagues or my any anyone that I, I'm working with. I love learning. So it, it's just my family business. I don't know. It's and when I say family business, that includes even my husband and my kids when we we do yard work at one of our ice cream stands to make sure it looks in tip top shape for opening and so they're, I, have, I drag them into it too. <laughs> well, as from one mother to another, I'll just say I used to feel really guilty when I worked a lot, when my kids were little and, or when I had to travel and leave them. But when my son Craig graduated from high school at Carabasset Valley Academy, actually he was salutatorian. And in his speech, he said, he wanted to thank his mother for teaching him the value of a work ethic. Wow, <laughs> and that, that just gave me that, the chills. Wow. Yeah. Uh, when he said that, oh my God, first of all, I was sobbing. Oh, but of it was course. Like, I was like, oh my God, all that time that I was just feeling guilty and horrible. I guess the kids really were noticing that I was working and they, they know that they benefited from it because I was able to pay for them to go to college and get a good education as well as uh, they were both ski racers. That was just like such a turning point for me in my personal and professional life. Oh, I guess... The kids, they, they didn't suffer, you know, they were able to see me working. And I'm sure your kids realize that you're working for the greater good of all of them, too. Yeah. And like you, my 
father, when we were younger, we used to give my, we'd go on vacation and, and at lunch and in the morning and night, my dad would be checking emails or voicemails and we'd give him a hard time. And now if we go on a, a, a family vacation and we'll go on vacation and my parents and siblings and everyone will go and my dad will now give us a hard time and say, what are you doing on the computer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like, we get it, dad. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of your father, what did your father and uncles teach you about how to work in a family business before you got involved? They uh, taught uh, many things, but they certainly taught us that you, you've got to get your hands dirty. And what I mean by that is be willing to jump in and do whatever is needed. If the bathroom needs to be cleaned, then well, do it. Get it. Don't just if you see if you see something on it's if you see something on the floor, don't just step over it. Pick it up. They were never afraid to jump in and do whatever was needed, even if it was outside of their scope. And so I think that that commitment from them and also it helped them I gain respect from other family members and, and those working for the business, knowing that they were willing to do whatever it takes for the success of the brand. But I've, I've learned that there will be tough times in business. And my father always would say to us, there's, you have to stay even, he would say. And I, I'd say, well, I don't know what you mean by that. And he'd say, there's going to be good times and you're going to get really excited and you're going to, you're going to be on this high of excitement, but around every corner, you're going to feel down because there's going to be tough times. There's going to be challenges. This is business and it is life. And I never really understood. And I'll tell you, Nancy, I understand it now. <laughs> and really, I started to understand that the stay even mentality, if you will. And really this year with COVID, it has been very important to really try to, as my dad said, stay even no matter what. We will get through this. We will get through it as a family and as a, a business and as a brand. And I really think that mindset that he instilled in me it really has helped me as well as my peers navigate the business through the challenging years year that we've had so far with COVID-19. But also my father and uncle, they didn't really have a choice but to work for the family business when they were younger, but they certainly gave all of us kids a choice and it was our decision. We weren't uh, made they didn't make us feel guilty if we wanted to pursue something else. My father and mother actually were trying to push us kids to do something else, to try something else, because they knew, they were well aware of the sleepless nights, the stress that comes along with it, that they had to go through with the family business. We never felt pressured into joining the family business. I think another thing is they, and you've heard the saying, I'm sure, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. I certainly <laughs> work for work with folks that are way more intelligent and have wonderful ideas and advice and they challenge me and they teach me new things every day. So I think that also has been instilled in my generation from my father and uncle as well. We're learning together. We're bouncing ideas off one another and working hard to, you know, continue the family legacy. It's obvious to me that you respect everyone that you work with and that you respect your father and uncles for what they've taught you. And that leads me to my next question, because you as a professional have your own personal brand. And how do you incorporate your personal brand into the Giffords company brand? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call it my personal brand per se, but rather um, I'm completely myself at work and I don't hide that. Something that has trickled into my leadership role at Giffords is that I'm, a pa I'm passionate about helping build strong leaders in Maine. Um, in my free time, I serve on other boards and that helps to develop my leadership skills as well as hopefully to mentor other younger 
folks on developing their theirs. It helps me in my role as a CEO and as a mom of two young young children. But I, I think that one thing that I think of when you ask the question, my personal brand, I think one thing that I will say is maybe difference in my generation than my father and uncle's generation is me and my generation, we're, we're more about, we're more open. And what I mean by that is we, we're more open to sharing information. We're not so, we don't keep it so um, close, if you will, because we feel that the more that the folks that work with and for Giffords, the more information we give them, information is power. If they can understand the why and the importance behind something, then who knows what that can turn into. And that's where ideas evolve. So we're, our, my generation is more open about sharing information with our colleagues. And I think because we now are working in a digital age also, Right. There's a lot of tools uh, for information sharing also, not only with other people who work for the company, but with your customers and, again, those brand ambassadors as well. Absolutely. But you've uh, tied in with some really powerful brands as the official ice cream of the Boston Bruins and the New England Patriots. That's so exciting. What's involved with those uh, programs? And do you go to a lot of the games? Yeah, I still pinch myself because. We're so fortunate to have been partnered with them that they chose us and we've had so much fun. We're unique and, you know, we throw a lot of ideas out to the Bruins and the Patriots uh, and they've been very great to work with. So, yeah, so we partnered with the Boston Bruins and we created a flavor with them called Power Play Fudge which is a golden vanilla ice cream. It has crushed chocolate cookies in it. Some, oh, uh, I want some <laughs> it's lots of chocolate. <laughs> some fudge-filled chocolate pucks that are, represent a, a hockey puck. And it also has a fudge ripple in it. And then we partnered last summer in 2019 with the Patriots. And we created a flavor with them called Dough Your Job. And it's vanilla ice cream and it has chocolate footballs. They're shaped like footballs and they have caramel filling inside them. And there's oh, also cookie so dough good. in it and heavy mm. fudge. So if you like chocolate for both of those flavors, <laughs> I highly recommend that. <laughs> but like I said earlier, our partnerships with both organizations, they've been very collaborative and fun and unique for them, I hope, but also for us because we're extremely passionate. We're not just going to partner with affiliations like the Boston Bruins and the Patriots and not do something creative and have fun with them. Yeah, it, we've had a lot of fun with it so far. And we can't wait to see what you know the future holds with both organizations. But as far as attending games, we were fortunate enough that we took the company, our our, the our our family members we all went to a patriots game together last december that was our annual holiday party if you will we had so much fun we all rode down together on a bus and it just it was we all were sitting there were like can you believe it we're all at a patriots game together this is just crazy we're again pinching ourselves it was so much fun We've gone to Bruins games as well together, but personally, I haven't been to to many games. I I I have two young kids, a seven and a, a four year old, and a husband. Maybe when they're a, a little bit older, we could go to a game together or something. Yeah, I'm sure when they're a little older, they're going to be asking to go as often as possible. I'm sure. <laughs> Lindsay, is there a book, an app, or a website that has helped you in your career and how? Yeah, so I I love listening to uh, podcasts. And one that I was about, I think it was a year ago, someone through the Institute for Family Owned Business, an organization that we work with, they had told me about a podcast called 
How I Built This with Guy Raz. Yeah, I like that one. Oh my goodness. Isn't it great? Yeah. So it's wonderful because I can listen. I, I have about an hour and a half commute to our office and our manufacturing plant from where I live. And it's really, I can listen to, to them on the way to and from work. And it really gives you that behind the scenes on various businesses and how they got started their biggest struggles and how they they overcame them or how maybe they had a struggle and they had to shift their business entirely. It's been really, really great for me um, to listen to. I've got a lot of great information. And sometimes I can even apply different techniques or strategies to our family business. But mostly it really helps me keep up that drive. And I like to listen to them, different podcasts through how I built this especially when maybe I'm having a, an off day or it's business. We all have those days where we think, am I doing a good job? Am I doing all the right things? And it just helps me to listen to other businesses and their struggles and their, their leaders of their businesses to know that, you know what? We're not all perfect. We're human and we're doing the best we can. And it, it just helps keep that drive and that no fail attitude. Yeah, it's, I love it. I, I think we should collaborate and try to get Giffords on to how I feel. Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> that would be really cool. <laughs> Let's work on that. We'll have to reach out to Guy Raz because I'm sure he would love to tell the story of Giffords. <laughs> yeah. So, Lindsay, this has been really awesome. And if somebody who's listening would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Yeah. So, I, choose not to have social media personally. However, they can reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn or they can email me Lindsay Gifford at giffordsicecream.com and I would be happy to chat with anyone. That's very nice. So I have really enjoyed this conversation so much and I want to thank you. I know your time is limited and I appreciate all the time. And I had first heard you when you were speaking with Lisa DeSisto at the program Like a Boss that was oh, yeah. uh, through the Portland Press Herald. And uh, so that's when I decided that I really wanted to have you on uh, the PR Maven podcast. So I'm really appreciative and I enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you in person and maybe having some of those <laughs> ice cream flavors <laughs> that you were talking about. That sounds so delicious. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Nancy. This has been a lot of fun and maybe we can hopefully soon meet in person and I can get you some of those ice cream flavors. <laughs> I hope so, too. So thank you, Lindsay. And I want to thank everybody in PR Maven Nation for listening in. And I hope you have a great day, PR Maven Nation. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do. I release a new episode each week and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation. <laughs>